Hello and welcome to the results presentation for NWF. This is the half year presentation for the period ended November 2016. It's fair to say it's been a tough first half, but we're really pleased with the progress we've made in each of the divisions. I now turn to the financial results. You can see first of all the revenue number is up, actually up 14% to £256 million. And that highlights the increased activity levels in each of our three divisions. The key other number I wish to highlight is the headline profit before tax, which for the first half was 2 million, down from 2.6 million last year, but that reflects a deficit in quarter one when we had a warm summer and a low milk price. The other number on the page to talk about is the net debt, 19.1 million. That's in line with our expectations and that's higher than last year as a consequence of the investment we made in acquiring GMP agriculture and the development spend in our mills on the Scottish borders and in Cheshire. As is our usual policy, we're looking to pay a 1p dividend at the half year. I'd now like to move on to the divisional highlights and I'll start with feeds. The picture top right you can see on the slide there is actually our new facility on the Scottish borders and that's at Longtown. And what we've done there is we've invested in doubling the capacity of this facility and that's now come on stream. The silos you can see there are new. I think those of you who saw the presentation in the summer saw a building site. Now that building site is completed and the benefit is it's going to double the production of this key mill on the Scottish borders. The picture below it shows the automated blend plant that we've now installed at Wardle. You can see a silo to the left of the building that's now within the building and that's producing automated blends which is both lower cost and improves production. If we look at the market, some really challenging and changing conditions. First of all, the milk price. It's very low in the summer, actually 21 pence at the start of this period, but it has improved through the year, now up to 25, 26 pence on average, and signs that it's gonna move further through the second half of the year. So that's good news for dairy farmers. Milk production, however, is still falling, and that's because dairy farmers reduced the size of their herds over the last two years as the milk price fell. So milk production in the first half year, down 8%. And we believe that will stay lower than last year's numbers for the rest of this financial year. The ruminant market as a consequence was down 1%. So positively against that shrinking market, you can see NWF volumes, bottom right, have increased by 1.5% to 268,000 tonnes. The other feature we've seen in this market is higher commodity prices. And that's both in their own currencies and also critically when they're converted into sterling. And we've seen commodity prices from a low point in March 2016 now 20% higher. So that's putting inflation into the food supply chain. So as I said, we've opened our new mills in the north and in Cheshire. We've increased prices to chase those commodity costs as they go up. And also positive to report that the acquisitions we've made in the last 18 months are performing as planned. So the results in the first half, you can see we made a loss of 0.3 compared to a 0.3 profit last year, but still had some good underlying growth and some efficiencies to come through in the second half year, which is the larger part of the year for us in the feeds division. If I now move on to the food business, you can see a very strong year here, operating profits up 14% to 1.6 million. And in this business, the Wardle site, which is our main operating site, has been at capacity through the period. You can see our storage units, again on the bottom right of that chart, 103,000 pallets, that's up 4% compared to last year. And if you remember, we've got a realistic operating capacity of about 95,000 in our water facility. So we've utilized external warehousing, principally in crew, and we've done that efficiently, and we've done that by shipping full loads onto customers from that overflow warehouse. Service levels are critical, and very positively, they've been maintained at 99.7%. So the reason for the growth, the reason for the higher activity is increased activity from our customers. Our loads have been over 10% higher this year than last year. And that's as a consequence of our fundamental customers that we store growing their business with the supermarkets and food retailers, but also I believe some underlying recovery that we can see in the ambient grocery markets. And some of the supermarkets are now reporting positive like-for-like -like sales. So we've been efficient and we've grown the business. We've also had good growth from Pallet Line. This is a small startup business. This is where we're moving pallets from Cheshire down to other parts of the country. And that's performed well, as has our packing room. The new Mercedes fleet is also performing well. The truck you can see on the picture there is one of 53. And we're getting improved miles per gallon in line with our expectations. We're also renewing some major contracts at this stage. Uh, we've recently signed a new two-year contract with Prince's Foods. 
Um, and this is actually at lower storage levels than they've previously stored with us, as they have some overflow warehousing of their own uh, in different parts of the country. Uh, but that's of course a key contract, but also allows us to have space to put additional customers' products in and new customers to come on board. So operating profit up 14%, storage levels up as well. But now I move on to fuels. I just talk volumes to start with. You can see we actually did 250 million litres of oil in the first half of the year, which is a record. And actually the team are looking to target half a billion litres for the first time in the full year. And we'll see how they get on in the second half. In terms of this business, it had a tough start to the year. We had a warm summer and a warm autumn. And that meant lower demand for heating oil, the key product that we're selling. So we counter that with increased sales of gas oil and diesel to give us that volume growth and utilize our 99 tankers across the UK. Interestingly, in the period, Brent crude was a bit more stable than we've seen before. It's actually moved in the range of $42 to $53 a barrel. And when I looked this morning, it was actually $56. The startup operations we've talked about before, that's at Home County Fuels and Martlet, both in the southeast of England, have been performing well. And in fact, in the first half year, have delivered over 15 million litres, which in volume terms is ahead of expectations. So we continue to look for further development in the second half. We've also highlighted in the statement the strong performance in November, which starts to offset the deficit that we saw in the summer from those warm periods. So operating profit, 0.9 million, and as I said, volume up to 250 million litres. I'd now like to move on and talk about the strategy and the future development of the group. What we believe at NWF is we've got a very strong platform for development. First of all, we've got a diversified source of earnings. That's because we have three divisions in three separate markets. So we're going to outperformance in one, which can offset underperformance in the other. Secondly, we've got very strong cash generation. If we don't find activities to spend on development capital, net, net, net will generate two to three million of cash a year. And that's a consistent theme over a number of years, the strong cash generation of the group. As a group, we've decided to focus on agriculture. And the reason for that is threefold. First of all, we're a major player in the market. We're actually number two. Secondly, we actually feed one in six dairy cows in Britain. We're a national player and we've been growing. And thirdly, the macroeconomic environment for food and agriculture in the world and in the UK is positive. And therefore, we're going to focus on developing this group. And that's what we've been doing over the last 18 months and continue to do. Both through bolt-on acquisition, starting to consolidate the UK market, but also for looking at additional products and services that we can supply to our nearly 5,000 farmers up and down the UK. It's also where we've been investing our development capital, when we've expanded the two mills that we've got both on the Scottish borders and in Cheshire. When it comes to fuels, this can be developed through bolt-on acquisitions and also through new startups. And again, you can see in the last 12 months, that's exactly what we've been doing. And we believe there's further opportunities for development in this space. And in food, in our food distribution business, it's all about optimizing the utilization of our assets, the site we have in Wardle, and looking to expand on the back of winning new business with additional or new customers. Very much providing a high level of service at a low cost efficient base. And that's what we've done very successfully over the last few years. The focus therefore is on total shareholder return. That's both on the progressive dividend policy. In fact, we've increased the dividend in seven of the last eight years but also looking for share price accretion. And that's therefore what will deliver that total shareholder return. So I'd now like to share with you the NWF business model. First of all, it's about a strong management team. And what I mean is people in each of our divisions who've got really good, solid understanding of the markets, the customers, and how to optimize the performance of those divisions and develop them whatever the market conditions. We also have growth opportunities. In the last few reporting periods, we've shown growth in each of the three divisions. And that's positive given the large stable markets in which we operate, which don't give us some underlying growth and therefore we need to grow through increasing our market share and the own initiatives we're taking as a group. We also have asset backing, significant assets, nearly 140 million of assets. That helps us sleep at nights, but it also gives us a solid asset base on which we can finance the group and therefore we can gain cost effective funding to fund the development of the group going forward. We focus on returns, and that's very much the mantra that we follow, and the cash generation I've already spoken about is the key that underpins it. As a consequence of all of those, we look to grow the dividend when prudently covered twice times. And again, that's what we've done in seven of the last eight years. So finally, to the summary and outlook. 
In spite of those tough market conditions, we made really good progress in the first half by increasing activity in all three divisions. The acquisitions we made are performing in line with expectation, and positively we have significant headroom in finance for further development. And as we've previously announced, Chris Belsham will be joining the group as finance director in the first half of the year. And I'm also pleased to announce that Philip Acton will be stepping up as chairman from our AGM in September. And that's as Mark Hudson retires after 10 successful years as chairman. With regard to Brexit, we've highlighted that demand in our markets has remained stable. And whilst there has been an impact on commodities from the changing exchange rate on sterling, that hasn't significantly impacted our business, but it's something we continue to monitor. And finally, we stated that we're trading in line with the board's expectations, and that's both in terms of profit and cash. Thank you very much.